Hello everyone, this is Preeti. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, I made videos on programming languages, uh, data science, artificial intelligence. If you are into this type of content, then please consider subscribing. Well, in this video, I'm going to share some of my explorations with Teapot. That is an automated machine learning framework in Python. The goal is to see what Teapot can do and how its advantages can become a part of our machine learning workflow. This video is the continuity of AutoML playlist. Uh, well, I have already uploaded videos on PyCarrot, on H2O AutoML, AutoSKLearn. Uh, so if you have not watched those videos yet, you can watch it, but that is not the prerequisite for this video. So the agenda for today's video is we will see what is Teapot. Then we will see a brief introduction about genetic programming. Then we will implement Teapot uh, with a data set. And then finally we will conclude Teapot along with its advantages and certain limitations. But before starting the video, actually I received few queries like will AutoML replace the machine learning engineer's role or will it replace data scientist? Well, this is not the truth. It will not replace data scientist, at least not yet. But yes, it might be helpful to you find a good models faster. So you can consider these AutoML frameworks as your assistant. So similarly in Teapot, we will see how Teapot can be uh, helped you as in your assistant that gives you idea on how to solve a particular machine learning problem by exploring pipeline configurations um, that you might have never con considered or ignored sometime. So Teapot will help you to find a good algorithms for your models. So let's start with what is Teapot. Teapot is a Python based AutoML library that uses genetic programming algorithms to find the best performing ML pipelines, which is built on the top of scikit-learn. So here you uh, might, you know, there might arise a question in your mind that what is actually genetic programming? We will discuss about genetic programming in this video only, but uh, just for, you know, better understanding. So let's take an example when, uh, let's say we uh, have a right data, we have a computing power along with a machine learning model. So we can discover solution to any problem. But knowing which model to use can be a challenge for us, you know. So uh, there are a lot of models there. It can be a decision tree, it can be k nearest neighbor, k means uh, linear regression. So there are a lot of algorithms, a lot of model. So here is where genetic programming can be of great use and it can provide a help. So genetic programming will automatically figure out which models is best for this data set. And not only this, but also it will help you to find the best parameters and the model ensembles for your model. So it can be also thought of as a natural selection or evolutionary algorithm. So, so we will discuss uh, more about genetic programming uh, in the upcoming time. So here automation of teapot consists of feature selection, model selection and parameter optimization. But it will not uh, do data pre-processing means all the part of data pre-processing such as it will not uh, do categorical conversion into numerical one. So if you, uh, it is somewhat similar to auto sklearn library. So next it can eliminate the most tedious part of machine learning. Uh, we will see that how it helps us to do that with practical implementation so here you can see that it uh, automate all this process uh, it actually doesn't automate all the data cl uh, cleaning process you have to do some uh, you know uh, feature engineering by yourself some pre-processing by yourself but yes it definitely helps to find you the best algorithm best model for your data set and it provides the best parameters as well well, we have already discussed about uh, genetic programming in machine learning, how it helps us in machine learning. So in simple words, genetic programming, actually it is used to discover solutions to the problems that human don't know how to solve directly. So uh, if there are certain solutions which are, you know, out of, out of our perceptions, so it generates solutions so, and provide, you know, better results. So genetic programming, um, if I talk about in layman terms, it is a technique that is used to create algorithms that can pro program by themselves. So instead of programming a model, uh, 
that can provide a particular problem genetic programming only provides a general objective and let the model figure out the details itself so uh, in simple words in layman words i can say that uh, it uh, just let the machine automatically test the uh, various algorithms and will provide you with the best one so so in t port it tries a pipeline evaluates its performance and randomly changes parts of the pipeline in the search for a better performing algorithms it has three properties uh, selection crossover and mutation in selection property it takes the population of possible solution and fitness function and at every iteration each solution is evaluated in crossover it takes uh, selecting the fittest solution and performing crossover to create a new population is quite simple actually and the last one is mutation uh, it takes uh, their children and and mutating them uh, with some random modification until you get the fittest or you can say the best solution now let's have a uh, look at their official website you can just simply click uh, type auto ml tpot or tpot you will get this official website uh, i will provide the link in the description below so here uh, installation is very simple you can just uh, simply do pip install and one more thing if you want to use xgboost then you have to install it fine so um, even uh, tpot still function normally without xgboost uh, if you have not installed but if you want to use it you can install it so here i just want to show you guys this thing so here tpot api uh, is provided for classification as well as for regression problem so we will see this how we can use this parameters uh, okay to find the right algorithm so let move let's move towards a problem so here is a problem for predicting blood analysis so here uh, we have to do the prediction that whether a person is going to donate the blood again again or not is just a small and less complex data set actually so i have chosen this because uh, uh, it's quite easy to run it on tpot because if it's a large data set then tpot will take a lot of time well you can download it from here if you want or i will also upload it on my github you can download it from my github repo as well if you want so let's start with this i'm going to use kaggle kernel for this data set um, the reason is i will tell you the reason in the end so let's start with this data set you can even use google collab or jupyter notebook if you want so now Uh, i have already tell you the aim of the project it's a classification problem uh, we have to identify who is likely to donate the blood again so the person is going to donate blood again or not so we have to identify that so let's start with importing some necessary libraries i have already imported it now i just want to filter out the unnecessary warnings then i am loading my data set so here i am loading my data set and this is actually uh, my target column so you can see all these columns and all have integer values uh, and this is my target prop uh, column i have to check whether the person is going to you know again donate the blood or not if he is going to donate blood again then it will be one if not then it is zero so uh, here i am just uh, providing a few terminologies for transfusion data frame so you can read it by yourself then i'm checking the size of my data set from train is 576 and the six columns and then for test data set it has 200 rows and five columns so uh, after that i'm getting the information you can see here that there is a no null value so there are no missing values here and all the data types are of integer type so definitely we don't need to do any missing imputation uh, and uh, we don't need to convert any Uh, data set there is no object data set all are have integer values so uh, okay now uh, we know that our target column is this one so what i am doing here i am just uh, simply you know for simplicity purpose i am just renaming it uh, fine this target column so um, to check uh, about the uh, my data set whether it's a balanced data set or imbalanced i am just checking it so here you can see that uh zero means the person who uh, doesn't you know donate the blood again it's almost 438 and the person who is going to donate the blood is 138 so it's an imbalanced data sheet uh, data set actually so uh, let's look to test data set so 
why uh, fine so this is about test information we don't have any null values all the features are of integer type Sci and then now let's explore the data a little bit more so describe function we know that how describes helps us to give us all the statistical information about our data so you can see this now uh, let's check, uh, check about the outliers and uh, you can see that uh, box plot and uh, so after looking into box plot you can see that most of the donations happen around the 10th month and there are few outliers as well so we know that we can treat the outlier depending on upon the algorithm we are using if we are using you know logistic or linear regression then these algorithms are sensitive to outliers we have to you know treat the outliers but if we are using uh, uh, unsupervised you can say hierarchical clustering they are not uh, sensitive to outliers so we will see that in future so here what I am doing I am just I just want to check the multi collinearity so here is a heat map for this and uh, you know what positive number and what negative numbers means if you are not familiar with the terms you can read it from here I have provided everything in the note, note below so now let's start with model building so uh, one thing guys if there are categorical features and there are uh, it does some pre-processing but not all the pre-processing you have to take care of certain things by yourself so here what I am doing I am just splitting my data set into train test split that's very simple and I am providing test size of 0 0.2 and random state you can give any random number you want so here I am just dropping the ID column unnamed column that is just a random ID and the target column which is basically I have to predict this so I am dropping this and splitting my data set into train test split so now I am going to use tport classifier and I am going to use ROC um, AUC score to predict uh, you know uh, my data set so here I have provided few parameters now what about all these parameters are about actually so here I am using uh, generation is equals to 5 and uh, then uh, apart from this I am using verbosity is equals to 2 so verbosity is equals to 2 means that it will uh, state how much information uh, t-port will communicate while it is uh, running so uh, apart from that generation actually basically means generation is the number of iterations to run pipeline optimization process by default it is 100 but if uh, we'll give it 100 it will take a lot of time so I have given 5 you can give 10 20 any number you want then there comes a population size population size basically means the number of uh, individuals to retain in the genetic programming population uh, in every generation it is also 100 by default uh, there are certain more parameters such as offspring size mutation rate so let me just go to this so here you can find this and the definitions are also provided here below so each and every parameter is defined here mutation rate basically is for genetic programming algorithm it's in range 0 to 1 so um, there is even crossover rate for genetic programming algorithm uh, it tells how many pipelines to breed every generation there is a crossover rate there is a scoring parameter so scoring parameter is definitely an important function that is used to evaluate the quality of the given pipeline uh, it's uh, for classification actually I have used uh, a ROC AUC curve so it will provide me uh, you know it will help me to evaluate the quality of my uh, problem then there is uh, CV also cross validation strategy by default it is 5 so um, I have not given any CV I want to use 5 means by default value there is a random state a random state actually the seed of this uh, pseudo random number generator it is somewhat similar to the random state we used during train, train test split um, if we use the same number it will give the same result uh, when we run each time each and every time so uh, fine these are all about parameters and uh, I have just checked the update check is equals to true and configuration you can explore it more from their official website actually fine so you will be more clear with this 
so these are all the parameters i have used fine so here i am just evaluating the score and So next, I just want to check the ROC AUC score for my you know data set for my model. So next, what I am doing, I just here what I am doing, I just want to print the best pipeline steps. I am just using a for loop and a for uh, enumerate basically adds a counter to uh, an iterable in Python. This is a uh, function of using enumerate function. So here it will uh, provide me uh, you know the all the uh, best pipeline steps so with the values obviously so these are the best pipeline steps and it has chosen a logistic regression for this along with the best parameters fine so it has provided me a uc score and so i am just using this here if you don't want to write it here just you want to select you can uh, you don't need to mention here you can simply use fitted underscore pipeline underscore this will give you the uh, best uh, algorithm for your model the best model and definitely with the best parameters fine so uh, you don't even need to write these steps here so apart from that now i know that uh, the best uh, you know uh, model it has chosen is logistic regression and it doesn't require any pre-processing even if it requires any pre-processing such as even if it requires any you know uh, log transformation or anything anything it will uh, provide you here it will give you all the details and it is providing me a uc score uh, 80 percent almost fine so it is 80 percent so now let's train the regression model uh, linear regression uh, for this logistic regression i have to import this uh, sklon.linear model so i am just uh, uh, initiating it and providing that parameters which t port has provided me so now here what i have done i have just fitted the model so it is ready to train after ready uh, uh, done after doing this i am just uh, testing my test data set i am just doing predictions so here is the confusion matrix you can get the confusion matrix uh, apart from that uh, i have used auc score so i can get the auc score here so this is all about Put. so you can see that how simple it is you just need to provide the parameters so instead of you know uh, checking for each and every model for logistic for linear regression for knn for each and every model instead of doing this all this process means uh, checking their accuracy or confusion matrix each and every time you have to go through the accuracy then you have to go through the best parameters again and again and you know it takes a lot of time so here it's quite simple you have to just provide the parameters and it will automatically provide you the best model for your data set <clears throat> so uh, now let's talk about uh, limitation actually this is all about advantage that you can use it uh, you know for any type of data set but the main disadvantage of t port is that it takes a lot of time if your data set is huge you can't use it for deep learning as well so another disadvantage that i have noticed is that it sometimes provide different results for same data set like i have run it on kaggle and it was uh, you know giving me logistic regression as the best model along with this parameters but when i run it on uh, google collab uh, when i run it on google collab it gives me uh, different results let me just show you guys so you can see here so it best pipeline steps it has given me is just stacking estimator means uh, with along with logistic regression so uh, this was uh, quite weird for me actually so this is its main limitation i have never seen this in any other auto ml framework so but i didn't use this because it was giving me a uc score 76 percent but uh, instead of uh, this using uh, if i use logistic regression only with uh, those parameters i was getting 80 percent so uh, this is the main limitation i would like to say that so it uh, if your data set is quite huge it takes a lot of time to finish the result and sometimes um, it gives different results for the same data set so this is all about tport how we can use tport you can use it on your own data set 
and if you have learned something please like the video and subscribe the channel stay tuned bye bye thank you so much